So we start today at number 217. I wanted to end yesterday in the top 200, but uh, I ended up having the problem of when I wanted to when I wanted to play at the very end, there was basically the uh, server issue, and I just had to end there. So that's fine. I guess I can just jump right in, honestly. <clears throat> I don't really know what I'm doing. So the patch in a nutshell. We're kind of back in a, a good stuff meta, basically. What's wrong with the meta? So, the change was that on level 8, you get 5% odds at legendaries, and at 9, you get 7% with 30% epics. Basically, leveling to 9 is much more incentivized, and it's just back to kind of like a legendary spam meta, which is kind of where we were like two months ago. And personally, it was my least favorite phase of the entire game. I think it was most people's least favorite phase of the entire game. We'll have to we'll have to see how it uh, how it goes. I think they're kind of figuring out what they want to do with legendaries. We're not going to be stuck on this for long. I guarantee you guys they're going to change things by next Thursday. That's a I, I can I can promise that. Hopefully sooner. Cuz I think like <clears throat> Pretty much nobody really likes the uh, the update. I think the change to blacklisting was very good though. So what are we thinking today? We're thinking today top top 100. Can we do top 100 today? Top 100 is gonna be a bit. It's, it starts when you're in the top 200. It starts really slowing down. Top 100 is what like 16 point. The change to blacklisting is good too, but not with the new tier changes. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think I agree with that. The tier changes, they're, they're, I, I, like I said, they're just going to change that. Have no fear, we're not, this isn't the game moving forward. I still need to fix this as well. This meta is mega dumb. I agree, a good sir. I'm locking the shit out of this. Double Venno, count me in. So, in the spirit of this new meta, I was close, we almost won round one. In the spirit of this new meta, <clears throat> Savages are looking very, very, very good, very good. And the reason for that is because you want to take something that wins early that you want to transition out of. Savages are perfect for that, right? As they're coming offline on like round 20, your kind of legendaries are starting to flood your board, maybe like four warlocks, you know, your shaman stuff. It just makes perfect sense. It's a very natural transition. Uh, is Chainmail still better than Breach of the Martyr? That's a good question. Maybe it's Gloves of Haste, actually. That's a weird one. Items definitely got pretty changed by this as well. And it's versus Ogre or Anti-Mage. I can scoop up Anti-Mage here. I think that's fine. So I got a hard eco down to 4 HP and then level. Then just get 2 star, 4 and 5 units and win with like 14 losses. Yeah. I don't think that's a good strategy, but... I mean, you definitely do want to Econ very aggressively. Three Shamans all the way? Yeah, three Shamans all the way. I think, like, some people are saying that three Shamans are just the way to play this video game right now, and I think I agree with that as well. Blightstone seems good. Is Blight better than Tranquil now? That's a weird one. I could see a couple of different arguments. You watch TI at all? Rip EG. Yeah, rip EG indeed. We're just blink boys. I don't really want to be in Scrappy right now. Let me just do this. I think that's fine. With Venomancer being a Warlock, some like weird ass pull, like a uh, level two, whatever it be. Druids. Yeah, this is okay. Uh, hmm. This is weird. 
With Venno being level 2 right now, some weird ass pull, like the double Warlock, completing like another level 2 Warlock, wouldn't honestly even be bad. I think that would be totally fine with me. I think having the Blink on Fury, just because he has like 50 max mana. It's 50, right? I think it's 50 max mana. Um, getting like the instant log will kind of help my complete lack of frontline right now. Have you played with Ceviche or Bebe? Uh, I've played in the same game as Ceviche a few times. I don't think I've played in the same game as Bebe. You enjoying the meta ATM? Uh, I haven't played a lot on this meta. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's not the not the greatest. This is fine though. It looks like we have a pretty ideal board. This is basically nuts. Like, we're on the Tusk out for four Savages early. We're up to like Furion, could complete, Treants, we could Ass Pull. We could find a lot of value here. This meta feels like the good stuff meta again, not as bad, but still. Yep, pretty much. It's not as bad, but yes, it's kind of like a good stuff meta again. It's a tier four and five meta, yeah. It's not gonna last that long, guys. Basically, the meta in a nutshell. Baby was saying it was a legendary meta last night during the Pro League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I agree. It's not... It's pretty much similar to how we were like two months ago. But yeah, it's another legendary meta. I want to hit this interest point quite badly. Do I sell out of the Furion pair or the Ogre pair? The answer to that is really, really simple. It's the Furion pair. That's not even hard. And then we can just sell these two. Um, Venno can be a little more centralized. I don't want to have. I don't want to have the risk of him having to move before attacking. His like time is too valuable. But yeah, savages are great right now. It's easier to get four cost of three stars than you said yesterday, by the way. Yeah? What did I say exactly? I mean, I don't know how worth it it is. I think for, for some like Arc Warden, it's definitely worth it. Honestly, I'm not even 100% sure about Arc Warden. So I think I just bail on the Fury on here, right? We're just full econing. And this is kind of like... You'll you'll know this playstyle if you played the game like two months ago. It's a little different from before, but we don't really care that much about our situation here. So we just want to make sure we didn't actually get that first cast off. That's pretty bad. Losing an entire wolves. I think we're still. Mm, yeah, this guy's got us. That was really really awful. Oh well. Uh, Battle of the Titans. We're good. Yeah. So we're just like full full econing. Playing like savages, which are cheap, could go for like a like in three this game. Um, but in general, three stars aren't really supposed to be your goal right now. I've even seen a few three star DKs. So yeah, three star DK is good as well. So if we chill and win, we could be good for this level up. Let's make sure our positioning is good against this board, actually. Oh, we hit him. Okay, let's see how this positioning swap helped. It's probably going to be pretty minor. I just want my Lycan to be blinking on the side so that they split tank. I just want both of them to get their wolves off before they die. And we shouldn't be able to lose if both of them get their wolves off before we die. With, like, the Savage stacking bleed, we should just be good. It's just too much bleed to handle. Okay, so we have kind of the ideal game. We haven't invested many resources. So we just beat this guy who leveled to five. Look at this. 
He's at 19 gold. He hit the one gold interest that turn, we hit the three gold interest, and we just beat him on top of that and killed his streak. He's also, like, two-starred more stuff than we have, right? There's Shadow Fiend, and Shadow Fiend is basically the ideal finisher to this comp. I think this is great. Uh, it's a good unit to slide in. Unfortunately, we will have to miss this interest point, but there's just nothing we can do about that. So Venomancer Gloves versus Shadow Fiend Gloves. Um, that's going to be an easy Venomancer Gloves, I think. It just looks good. Make sure our board's in a good position against the Streaker, which it is, and we're good. So Enchantress needs to be right behind Lycan, and there's a very simple reason for that. Because Enchantress has really low attack range. She has the shortest attack range in the entire game, and she needs to be able to attack immediately when the fight starts. My Shadow Fiend has longer attack range, so he's further back. And I also kind of want him to die later. Like, same as my Venno, they, they want to die, like, latest into a fight. So, now that we can actually buy units, we can see if there's anything we want to take. Really nothing. I mean, we could buy the Warlock, and then if it completes, in theory, we could run it, but... I mean, Shadow Fiend 1 is better than Warlock 2, so that's straight up not happening. <clears throat> Lower attack range than melee, even? Okay. It does have higher attack range than melee, technically. It's so weird that she's the only two attack range unit in the entire game. Everything else, every other unit, has at least three attack range. Why is that? Out of all the Dota 2 heroes, Enchantress. Because Enchantress doesn't have that low attack range in Dota 2. It's less than 600, but it's a lot more than some other heroes like Luna and TA. Do you find yourself talking even when playing off stream? Uh, I think I used to, oddly enough. I don't know. Usually, I, I think I talk too much like during my streams that when I'm like playing things off stream, I, I just don't want to use that energy. <laughs> I just want to sit there and just rot like a real gamer. Yeah, and we're just chilling here. In theory, if I complete this pudge, it works with this comp pretty well. It's just a big fatty. She has pretty good attack range in Dota. Isn't it like 550 or 575 or something? If I remember correctly, it's like, it's just short of 600. Maybe like 500. It's 5 something. I used to have like every single... I was such a fucking nerd in Dota, dude. I used to have, like, every single attack range and, like, weird, weird, like, level numbers just memorized off the top of my head. Now it's all gone. And I'll, I'll never get that brain space back. So I want to take a roll here. Do I? We are the level meta. Is Venomancer better than Enchantress? It is, right? Hmm. I need Arcane Boots to hit everything. Arcanes are gonna be nuts here. If we make sure Lycans get their spells off before they die, and Venno and Shadowfiend are also picking it up here, it's gonna be pretty hard to lose. This looks like a loss, though. So in the old meta, a couple of things. Let's talk about, like, what we're playing differently. So we took Arcanes over Smuggler on 10. We snapped that without even thinking about it. Last patch, I would have thought about it, and the reason for that is because mana boots are a lot more good when you have a lot of like legendary spells going off and you need to cast faster than the other person. So Arcane Boots got a really big buff, which is why I'm snapping it over Smuggler at 10, even though it would have been pretty close to a toss-up, uh, I guess, before this. We've got a free roll here. Uh, I can use a free roll, right? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Holy shit. There we go. So, uh, oh wait, we don't have four with a, <laughs> sorry, I, I had a, I had a brain moment. I'm in the middle of an explanation. Give me a break. Okay. Anywho, um, we were talking about like differences in how I'm playing. Uh, we were on a streak to protect come 11. We were looking to, uh, take potentially a defensive role. That's the kind of situation where I'm close to outs. Tusk gives me four savages. Lycan completes the two-star Lycan. Um, and then there's like weird ass pull potential like Lone Druid, which is a two percenter here. Is it not a two percenter at five anymore? I didn't even see that change. I'm 
I'm so close to outs. I'm so ridiculously close to outs, but pressing the roll button is so expensive right now. I think I'm misplaying. Well, I have a literally unbeatable board. So we can literally AF. Holy shit, this guy's got a lone druid. Never mind. So at 6, your odds go to 10. Oh, Jesus. It goes from 0 to 10? Oh, that's so bad. Oh, that's bad. They should change that. I didn't even notice that. Everyone's always, like, fixed on the legendaries. Why would they make it go from 0 to 10? So before it was at 5, you had a 2%. And at 6, you had a 7%. I don't like this new philosophy. So level 5 is just a waste of time? No, not really. So the, the, they're changing things. So the new philosophy is like, they want the to be less ass pulls, basically. But ass pulls are good for the game. I think Necro 1 is better than Shadow Fiend 1 on this board. This looks good. Can that even be true? I mean, even though I want heals more than damage, yeah, that can be true. I don't know, I prefer more gradual increases. I like there being like a low chance at... So before it was, for epics, it was a 2%er at 5 and then a 7%er at 6. And that's like the spike. It's a spike of 5%. Now it's a spike of 10% because it goes from 0 to 10 on the same levels. And legendaries have kind of the same pattern. It used to be 1%er at 8 and then what, what was it at 9? A, like a 3%er? And now it goes from 0 to 5%. And I don't, I don't really like that. I think it's tends to make like games more convergent like different different matches will tend to play out too similarly to each other because of that this guy's level seven already um might be embracing the new meta a little too much it's going to be great working with you so we spent a bit of gold We'll always, we might go to 8 on 17. We're probably going to 8 on 17. That's like the new meta. The new meta is like 8 on 17. Because level 8 is really important now. How are you liking the new shit shove, good stuff, bound by blood ball meta? Yeah, it's not great. How's blood bound in this meta, BDH? You have the money to level though? Yeah, we're just chilling. We're just gonna transition savages out into good stuff, basically. Something like a Shadow Fiend 3 could actually be part of our final board, for sure, 100%. So I wouldn't mind keeping building this. I mean, is Arcane just better than Helm of the Untying? That's a weird one. Helm is also kind of good. It's in the last legendary meta, we didn't actually have Helm, right? Helm is in theory good in like the legendary meta kind of situation. Pudge is way better than Shadow Fiend here. It's actually not even close. This is why we bench Pudge. Five armor here, sure, seems good. We just want to slow the fight down. I don't care about my DPS. I have all the DPS I want. I'm throttled right now by my ability to slow the fight down. And Pudge is a huge fatty. Fight goes long, we can't lose. Real question is why did you not pick Aegis? Aegis? These two items outclass Aegis by a ridiculous degree. Especially in this game. These are like two of the best tier twos you can find right now. And then there's the Crystal Maiden option. I mean, Lich is in every, like, endgame comp, right? Troll Warlord is meta? Yeah, Troll is nuts. Witch Doctor, I think, is core. 
Which doctor feels core? Oh, we could have pre-leveled there. Yeah, I think we were supposed to pre-level. I forgot pre-leveling existed again. But yeah, you want to be 8 on 17. If you're not 8 on 17, you're, you're a chump. Ah. I can, I can forgo four Warlocks for a bit. 8 on 17. Them's the fucking... This guy's gonna co-op 3! What? Okay. All right. This is like old meta, but on steroids? What do you mean exactly? But he just can take you from 8 to 7? Ooh, woo. <laughs> yeah. Got him. Nicely done, dude. He's two levels behind you? Dude, this guy is deep rolling. Let's see how long he can keep this up. Hmm. I wonder if that was worth it. It did just potentially cost us an interest point there. What do I sell? I can sell Pudge, right? If I want this interest point this badly. Hmm. This is an okay board. Rebuy the Pudge. I have zero motivation to play right now, though. Meta is underwhelming and climbing ladder is monk ass. Getting negative gains from third and top. Hundred feels good, man. Yeah. I I don't disagree. I do think I do think that the the changes to, to rates were pretty negative for the game. And they'll revert it though. It's not like they don't realize that at this point. The question is Is it gonna be Thursday or like, you know, Monday, Tuesday? That would be neat if it was like Monday, Tuesday. So Alchemist is a pretty fantastic thing to find here. Because Alchemist gives me a frontline warlock, which I really want right now. I just want more frontliners. I can have Necrophos right up front. Why the hell not? So the question is, are we going to 9 on 21? Because the old meta was like a super, super just like, let's go to 9 on 21, forehead. And that's what you do when you have high econ. Our econ is high, but it's not that high. Probably, right? Did we just go to 9 on 21? I mean, I think we're just going to 9 on 21. Why would we roll when we can level? I'm not even streaking that well. Like, this board should be streaking a lot better than it has been. Level 9 is the shit. 9 on 21 is a lot of money. It really is. I think in this meta, the standard play is 9 on 25. That's pretty much what you're going to want to aim for. But if you have, like, really high econ and your roll value is low, I think you can consider going 9 on 21. I think that it's too much interest for kind of no reason at this point. Because my probabilities are pretty good over time. It's like my tier four, uh, my tier five odds are at fifty five percent. So when you when you look to level nine, your tier fives go to seven percent, and your tier fours go to thirty percent. So it's really you doing it for the tier fours. I do want like an arc level two. I think every comp arc warden is probably one of the more contested units in the game right now. I think like every comp wants shamans, and because you have troll warlord and witch doctor, again other contested units, you don't need shadow shaman for trolls, which means arc warden is your third shaman, especially if you have a decent item to stick on him. Like a Basher or a Maelstrom works pretty well on him. So there's the stone. Can we take stone? I think we can take stone here. I think Vanguard is kind of shitty. Stone will always work on Arc Warden, and it'll help me coast a bit longer on this board. Like, I can actually just kind of AFK on this board a bit longer. I think I don't roll until we go to 9. After taking that stone, every comp is Warlocks. Yeah. I mean, I could roll a bit. I could roll to like one out, like Necro or Enchantress or something. I feel like taking the stone just makes my board pretty good, though. 
I mean, how do I not have, like, the second best board in the... Okay, this guy might beat us, though. Uh-oh, mages, our arch nemesis. It's a disaster. So savages will win long fights really hard. Mages will force short fights. It's no good for us. Also, savages have pure damage, which goes through armor. Which means savages are great against, like, knights and scrappies. And, like, warriors, maybe. Although warriors isn't so much of a thing. The mages will absolutely destroy savages. So I guess the question is... Do we level now? Does leveling... Leveling hurts our tier 3 odds, right? Leveling to 9 makes tier 3s go to 30. I don't think our progress on Shadowfiend or Lycan means we should be aiming for them, though. Eh, we could have dropped one interest point for the level up. We should have. I should have, like, sold Pudge, leveled three times, dropped one interest point for this. That would have been better. We have the high econ, so we can afford to do this. This looks like a comp we beat anyway, so we get rewarded for misplaying. We'll go to 9 here. Yeah. Burning 1 interest point, because we could have gone down to just 40, as you can see here. Going to 9, and now we've just got like the best odds. I'm not even doing this for the legendary odds, I'm doing this for the epic odds. Uh, I mean, this works for a bit, right? I guess we could have kept that little guy for a second. And we can just chill. We're going to Tide 2, Deusa 2. It's just old legendary meta. Four Warlocks. Three shamans, two scaled. We're gonna have the Arc Warden. It's gonna be a little slow to come, I think. One star inch? Yeah. This one star inch is a little sad, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. We're still top board, top health. Uh, I think we're like second board, first health. Actually, we're probably like third board. <laughs> I don't know. This, this mage guy has a better board than us. Forklift 1480. What's up, man? How's it going, dude? Welcome to the 1 8th Gay Club. Uh, Tetris. Can I just put in like a level 1? I don't think so. I mean, the whole point the meta is back is they nerfed level 1s, but I still, I still need, I still need level 2s to really want to put stuff in, right? I guess I do have this Witch Doctor that's doing literally nothing. And this is at least pairing Scrappies. Eh. We can do this. Line is a mistake and meme always now except for adding unit again to change my mind. I think it depends on your three star progress. I think that if you have, if, if I had like five Shadow Fiends, I would have stayed at eight and just rolled. Because legendary odds stay at 5%. I think the reason you level tonight now is the tier four odds. You can, I really just want to get like level two Arc Warden, uh, level two Tide Hunter. Uh, level 2 Disruptor. I want to get these online as soon as possible. The Warlocks are 4 cost, and like we have the economy to sustain going to 9 here, for, like basically easily. Well, we're on bad roll value. Our roll value is deflated because Shadowfiend and Lycan aren't 3 starring. I don't, I'm obviously not 3 starring Venno. Um, we just want to be hitting while we're good. DK is good, right? Is DK good? DK is not good. There's no way. I'm not going DK. Sniper. I think three-starring Sniper is solid right now. Our progress is just too bad for it. Tier 3s go to 25 on 9. Well, whatever on your tier 4 is, is already up from last patch. You're going to get them anyway. And 40 gold, 20 rerolls. It's like eight or nine rounds before the amount of level nine rolls weighs the 40 gold spent. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. There's also like the uh, pretty immediate board improvement if you have some decent thing to put in, which in this case we probably didn't, but we're talking about in general. Um, 
I think in a case like this, I mean, you can easily get to like eight or nine rounds for the payoff, right? Do that. We can take dig on there. I don't know. Pipe seems kind of bad, honestly. Pipe just forces you to stick together. If this was like a two cell radius, it would be so much better. And this is kind of awkward. We only have like one witch doctor. How is this happening? So Dusa in over like a Venomancer 1 and then sell for interest point. And then sell, yeah, sell the Venom 1 for the interest point. We're taking like the transition path now. I guess Gyro and Techies are pairing Inventors, which back before the other, in, in the other Legendary meta, the Inventor pair was literally useless. 15% explosion on Techies actually does something. Maybe you could even think about like frontlining Gyro now. That pipe pick an accident? Yeah, yeah, we want the dig on there, I think. Pairing scaled is just neat, I think. And so, as we probably, at this point of the game, didn't want gloves on him anyway. Alchemist, is Alchemist part of our endgame comp? I don't know if it is. I need the troll pair though, right? Ah, things are moving a little bit fast here. We're gonna have to take like a hard transition on 30. Blink Tide might be a little too trolly. I think he just wants, with the two range ravage, he just wants to be in front to be more centralized to the board. I'm new to this game, what's the point of collecting these rare pieces? Uh, right now, uh, these rare pieces are very good. The problem is, until they uh, combine into a two-star unit, I don't know if it's worth playing them. And I can just like keep the synergies that I have now for the time being. You lose health like very quickly at this point, though. Uh, Tide level 3 is actually something that should be in people's ranges right now, hilariously enough. So we have like the scaled pair here. It's a little too sloppy. We need to we need to change things faster. We're basically going for like a full transition, and we're losing a lot of health in the meantime before we get like our board online. It's burning a bit of interest as well. Kill this one at least. We need to get the shaman online and just like two star stuff basically. We're basically guaranteed alive through 30 though, which is nice. So is Troll no good here? Something like this is what we want to be. Just like four Warlock Legendary spam. SF is weak. Uh, he's not super ideal. Right now, he's my current fourth Warlock. Ideally, it would want to be Witch Doctor, but we only found one Witch Doctor all game. I'm not even sure if I want. I, I, I could have kept it and tried to get a Witch Doctor level two. 20% odds. Something that's like pretty contested. Witch Doctor is just like pretty much the best early game unit to get right now, because you need a level two Witch Doctor in your end game board. It's so good. Like, having the troll tag and the warlock tag and a very powerful ability just makes it, like, almost essential in every late game board. 
And here our board has kind of come online. So it was a kind of shaky transition. We could have done a few things a little bit faster and come online a bit earlier. Um, and we're still missing the uh, third shaman, right? Which is typically supposed to be an enigma level two. Oddly enough, we haven't found a single enigma yet. Um, because we haven't found a single enigma yet, it means that maybe, and because we don't have the witch doctor, it's possible we could go for shadow shaman to complete trolls. Um, do we want to be in four warlock? So we need the two scaled. Oh, well, Scotty gets a lot better now that Deuce is on the table. What's the meta right now? It's just legendary meta. It's not that different from two months ago. You pair trolls with Witch Doctor, Troll Warlord. You go shamans, like, every game you can. Um, I think something with three mages actually sounds pretty good. I'm pretty tempted to go with three mages if I have a big-time contract. It's like Ogre, CM, Lich it actually sounds quite good to me. You don't need 4 Warlock? Yeah, I think I could get out of 4 Warlock. Especially since the Shadow Fiend is here and it's not upgrading. So, Basher is better than Maelstrom, but Bracers is better than both. Bracers also kind of exacerbates this meta as well. Bracers on Tide or Disruptor? I could see an argument either way. Two new Dota, two heroes are coming Thunderlords. Yeah, it should be neat. Mm, everything wants to be centralized. I think this is fine, though. Necker's still hitting basically everything. Um, we could put Helm on, like, Shadowfiend instead of Necro as well. I guess Bracers on Tide or Disruptor could just be an argument of which one is actually more likely to get the ult off, which is basically which one is squishier. And Disruptor is a lot squishier. He'll reach 30% HP a lot more easily than Tide. Mages with Lich 2 is really unfair and too reliable. Yes, Mages with Lich 2 is really unfair. So I could, I could swap these Bracers, which is fine. Because Tide wants to be more centralized for Arcanes anyway, so it allows me to do this and have Arcanes hitting everything, Tide and Necro being the two centralized units. Um, I want to be rolling for upgrades before we go to 10, right? What are the 10 odds? I don't even remember the 10 odds. 10 on 33. We could actually just go to 10 on 33 and then roll. Isn't that better? I want a troll level 2, and I'd take like an Enigma level 1 at this point, right? Is Arc the best gloves carrier? He's got to be. Arc level 2 with a clone. Split shot is minus 20%. It's only minus 20%. Maybe it's Dusa, actually. So yeah, we just have like a couple of easy synergies. We just legendary stomp. Focus on mana items a little bit. And that's basically the new meta. I mean, I think this game is like a perfect example of how you should play the meta. Um, there might be like a few minor optimizations. Like I said, it's arguable we could have stayed level 8 for a bit longer. I think if we were closer to Shadow Fiends or even Lycans, we have Summoning Stone, I wouldn't mind a level 3 Lycan. We would definitely like roll at 8, and if we're rolling at 8, we're accomplishing looking for level 3s and looking for legendaries. Because the level 8 odds are great for tier 5 units. That 5% already on level 8, which is crazy. It's absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is basically just it. Which doctor level to 10. We even need witch doctor. Complete shamans. Hmm. I mean, shamans can just be game winning sometimes. It's really kind of awkward having this bench the way it is, but that's okay. If you haven't seen Reckles rolling for his level in that video, yeah, yeah, I actually, I've seen that. It's pretty good. But yeah, I mean, if you, if you play like this, you jam something early, I think Savages is perfect. Savages is literally like the perfect comp right now to just shove early. 
It just gives you a free early game. It's not very expensive. You just get it in there. Here we have the guaranteed stay alive until 34. Our streak's not worth that much. Our interest is worth more. We're just gonna chill. We can focus our efforts on positioning here instead. I wouldn't mind chickening something on the side, so at the last second I will take an aggressive swap. Here's the Doom 3, which I'm gonna swap to chicken as well. So we're gonna take two aggressive swaps against the streaker, which is gonna be this and this at the last second. Trying to chicken these two things. We hit him, so we're trying to, ooh, he swapped as well. Wait, it was ruthless. We were trying to change our board for. It's fine. It looks like we're just good here. I mean, having the scaled bonus is just what you want right now. Tide and Medusa are back, baby. It's just good. And we're just, we're in a full good stuff meta again. I mean, you know the drill, guys. If you, if you played this game, like, a month and a half or two months ago when this was meta, it's the, it's basic, it's a little different. It is a little different, but it is the same thing. You do know the drill. We've, we've done this before. We've, we've been here before, right? How long do you stay at 8? What's the goal for 10? You usually stay at 8. I like to level to 8 on 17, and then I often level to 9 on 25. If you have high economy, though, you can try to level to 9 earlier. So 8 on like 17 and 9 on 25 means you're staying at 8 for 8 rounds. But 8 on 17 is kind of the new timing you want. Level 8 is a big power spike in terms of the legendaries you find. But you could do it later, like on 21, if you have some irregular situation, maybe? I don't know. Might be too edgy. We hit like the last two upgrades we're looking for. At this point, what do we even want? Like techies. Techies and gyro are two-starred here, both with blinks. We have the shamans. You're always gonna run shamans here. Snap Scotty. Ooh. Scotty Daedalus Refresher. I think Refresher is a little idealistic. Refresher is kind of win more in a fight, whereas Scotty Dusa picking up like Pipe Shield, I think is just a win condition. I don't know. Refresher is very impressive when it works though. And I think we can just chill here and see what this guy has cooking. At this point, the most important difference is gonna be positioning. Um, so he's got his Tide Hunter here. We're gonna wanna make sure Dusa's out of its range. It's got a two cell radius, so we're fine in doing that. We want the Shaman in front of his Tide Hunter, which it's actually in front of already. Nope. Okay, let's swap our Shaman in front of his Tide Hunter, see if he chickens. But your Shamans are just kind of your new tanks now, because if you hit that chicken, you're just good. We got the Bracer's ulti off, and we just follow up. Techie's bomb into a very easy first place. Did I speak too soon? No, I did not. Okay, just do this every game. Again, this general idea, you just literally shove this every game, you'll get lured, you'll climb. This is why people don't like this meta right now. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I don't like this meta right now. I think, I think they, I, why? Why? At the very least, the devs are aware of this. Um, I do think at the very, very, very latest, you're gonna see changes on Thursday. They're probably gonna at least revert the system. I actually think they might uh, tweak, instead of like fully reverting it, they might just like tweak how legendary units are implemented into the game. Because I actually think that it's just kind of like flawed. Um, specifically, I, a lot of people are calling for reversions, but in the last meta, legendary units basically weren't used at all, whereas, the way legendary units are designed right now, they aren't really synergy units, right? A couple of them are to some degree. Like we can we can look here. I actually want to like break this down because I think it's like fairly important to understand. These are non-synergistic units for the most part. Like Dusa hits scaled, but that's not really an alliance, it's just a pocket pair. Same with Heartless, same with Inventors, you know, same with Deadeye. And e even the same with like Shaman and Primordial. Like none of these are really on main alliances. Main alliances being stuff like, you know, typically these are like the defensive shell of a build, which is gonna be stuff like knights, uh, it's gonna be stuff like scrappies, which techies fulfills, but you don't really want six scrappies, so it, it kinda ends up being a little unnecessary to the build. Um, something like uh, warriors, if warriors was better, warriors is kinda designed to be a defensive shell, but six warriors just doesn't really work that well right now. Um, and uh, or, or even, even I guess, like, the weird, like, brawny package. 
basically the way legendaries should work instead of probably being just like big altars is they should probably be what I would call optional inclusions that you want to swap something out for in an alliance tag that needs them, right? So the troll might be an, an example. The problem is he's the only fourth troll. And you can kind of have maybe an awkward scenario where you don't find him. I think it should be a bit more optional. But these should be like less standalone strong units and more about like just fitting into alliances. I think the last meta really kind of nailed it in terms of where the game wants to be at from a synergy perspective. It's supposed to be like a high synergy game where, I mean, I think three starring units is, is fine to incentivize. I think you could argue it maybe got a little too extreme with the three star meta in terms of like needing like seven three stars to get first place at certain times. But, you know, reduction on like manual blacklisting uh, changes do help that. And there's kind of other tweaks that that could have, but they should be like basically fitting like tighter synergies, I think. Yeah, okay. I guess we'll just play again.